Hello 2D and welcome to your last lesson on quadratic equations. This is application of quadratic equations part 2 and you'll notice that I don't have a goal up here. That's because we're carrying on from last week's or last day's lesson. Uh, so we're using the same goal. So we have two more types of applications of quadratic equations to get through today. Uh, and the first one which we'll call example 4 since we had three examples last class. As one value increases, the other decreases. This is a revenue yield problem. Um, sometimes we talk about revenue, sometimes we talk about yield. Uh, the student council sells sweatshirts as a fundraiser. Last year they sold 325 shirts at $45 each. In an effort to promote school spirit, this year they intend to decrease the price. A survey shows that for each $1 decrease, they will sell five more shirts. Okay, so I'm going to highlight the important information here. Um, each $1 decrease, and that's important, they sell five more shirts. So for every time they decrease the price by a dollar, they sell five more shirts. Uh, this part's important too. Right now they're $325. They sell $325 at $45 each. So this looks an awful lot like a problem that we did last unit, except that it's now asking us for the, uh, the value that we can sell it at that will result in this particular revenue. They're not asking us for maximum or minimum anymore. They're asking us for an exact revenue, excuse me. And that's where it makes it a quadratic equation question and not a quadratic functioning question. This is an exact value. But we're going to set it up exactly the same. This is a revenue problem. And revenue equals the price. times the number sold, always. And the thing that's changing here is how many times they decrease it by a dollar. So we need to say let the number of one dollar decreases B, D for decreases. Okay, now we will have revenue equals the price. We're going to have some function and another function for the number of sold. So for the price, it starts at $45. For the number sold, it starts at 325 Well, what's happening to the price? They're decreasing it. And they're decreasing it by one dollar. But they're not just going to do it once. They might do it twice, three times, four times. We don't know. So we have to put a D there to say that it's happening um, more than once. Or it might be happening more than once. Now for the 325, what's going to happen to it? Well, they're going to sell five more shirts every time we decrease it by a dollar. So there's our equation. We need to expand, simplify, and get one side equal to zero. So I'm going to do that for you right now. Now it's at this point um, right here after we've got it expanded and simplified that we would have normally switched it around and completed the square in a maximum minimum problem. But it's not a maximum minimum problem, it's an exact value problem. So what we have to do before we set one side, get one side equal to zero, is sub in something for the revenue. And in this case it's 13,125. And now we need to rearrange, get one side equal to zero, and solve the equation. So there we are, we've rearranged and now before I actually try to solve it um, either with the quadratic formula or with factoring, I'm going to take out a common factor. Um, 
negative 5 can come out of all three of these terms and that's going to make my um, factoring or solving with the quadratic formula a whole lot easier if I actually take out that negative 5. So I'm going to take out negative 5 and I get d squared plus 20d. Whoops. Minus 300. And now that's going to be a whole lot easier to solve and in fact as I look at it I can see that that's actually factorable. Um, I'm going to put down the negative 5, put d's at the front. This is a simple trinomial, so I'm looking for something that multiplies to 300 and subtracts to 20. And multiplying to 300 is as simple as 30 and 10, and those do in fact subtract to 20. I know since the middle term is positive that I need more positives than negatives. So I have two answers. d equals negative 30 or d equals 10. Now negative 30 doesn't make any sense. Negative 30 corresponds to an increase, not a decrease, an increase 30 times by a dollar. And we don't want to increase it, we want to decrease it. So this one here corresponds to a decrease 10 times. And again, that's for a dollar. So what does this say? What is the selling price? So we want to decrease it 10 times um, by a dollar. So it started off as 45, and here's our price function. So cost price, actually that's not, yeah, that's the price function. Price equals 45 minus D. So we need 45 minus 10, or $35. So they should sell it for $35. And we'll look at part B, it says how many shirts will be sold at this price. Well, this up here, is the shirt function and so they're the number of shirts so the number sold will equal 325 plus 5 times 10 which means that they're going to add on another 50 shirts for 375 shirts so they will sell 375 shirts for $35 uh, in order to maximize school um, spirit, not maximize price or caught revenue. Next question. Dimension changes. A picture that is 20 centimeters by 25 centimeters is cropped so that twice the width is taken from the bottom as from the right side. So we're going to crop on the right side. So I'm going to crop this much off my picture. Uh, but then it says there's twice that amount <coughs> taken off the bottom. So I need to take that off. And it says if the area cropped off is 100 square centimeters, what width is cropped from each side? So we want to know the width that's cropped from each side. So let's let that be x, and then down here is going to be 2x. Now there's two different ways that we could set up this equation. We could set up this equation with the cropped off area, because we know we can find an equation for this cropped off area. Uh, and we know that that is 100 square centimeters. Um, that should have been 20. hope that didn't confuse anybody when I put 25 on both dimensions. <clears throat> the part cropped off is 100 square centimeters, um, but the part crop, the part kept, we could do an equation with it too because I could figure that one out. It used to be 20 by 25, which was 500. So the whole picture used to be 500 and we cropped off 100. So the red area is 400 centimeters squared.
So we can make an equation for the part that's in red, or we can make an equation for the parts in, that's in blue. Um, now I actually think that the part that's in red is little, or in blue is a little bit easier to get an equation for. I'm going to find an equation, and let's use the highlighter here. I'm going to find an equation for this area and an equation for this area. and then put them together. So <clears throat> my equation for the bottom area is 2x on this side and 20 along this side because this is 20 the same as the top. So we want to find the area of the shaded. I need to make a let statement first. Let the cropped area or the cropped width be x. So if the cropped width is x, then this green part here, um, we're going to start putting them together. The area of the green part is 2x by 20. So 2x times 20. And we're going to add to that this pink area. Well, this pink area, this side here, is 25 subtract this 2x on the bottom. So we have 25 minus 2x, and this here is just x. So x times 25 minus 2x. And I know that this cropped off area is 100, so I know that that area is 100. And I'm going to expand this side, and I get 40x plus 25x minus 2x squared rearranging and getting one side equal to zero. I'm going to put that negative 2x squared out front. I have uh, 65x's in the middle plus 65x and then I need to subtract that 100 on both sides. Now in this case the 2 doesn't come out but I can get rid of that negative. I never like the a value to be negative um, because it's harder to factor or it's I'm going to get lost in the quadratic formula. Um, so I'm going to change the sign on all of these things, which is effectively multiplying through by negative 1 on both sides. So minus 65x plus 100. Now this thing doesn't look immediately factorable to me, so if I don't see immediately how it factors, I'm much, much better to put it into the quadratic formula. So it's a good job I put it into the quadratic formula uh, because this messy answer down here, this thing under the square root is nowhere near a perfect square, so it would not have factored. Um, so I've got my two answers here. I can either crop off 30.9 or 1.6. Now we have to decide which one of these makes sense. Now since the one of them is not negative, I have to do a little bit more thinking. Okay, let's suppose I cropped off 30.9. So then up here, if I have 20 across the top and I crop off 30.9, I have to go less than 20 wide um, or less than 0 wide. Uh, so that one doesn't work. So this one is in fact our inadmissible answer or our extraneous root. It's inadmissible. Um, so here's our actual answer, uh, 1.6. Now let's make sure we ask the Quest, the exact question, answer the exact question. It says, if the area cropped off is 100 square centimeters, what width is cropped from each side? So we just need the x and the 2x. So you must crop 1.6 centimeters from the right and 3.2 centimeters from the bottom. And that concludes our course.